back at it today. Doing some small isolation strips, cutting the beans. I'm here in the 790, waiting for the grain cart to get back, got full. Figured I better not push the limit today and get beans all over the cab on the second day of harvest. So it looks like I stopped about the right time. I probably could have gone another few hundred feet, but next thing you know, you stop and it all comes forward. So why, why even force it? Just stop and wait. So I decided to hop up here and see how my sample looks. It's getting a little better, not perfect, but I think that'll do, you know, you got a little bit of that in there, some chaff. I mean, you really got to nitpick to get the rest of that stuff out of there. I do notice you get a little green stems here and there. You get some green pods that don't want to thrash, obviously, because they're just tough and green yet, like this guy right here, you know, that's, that's pretty hard to get something like that to open up going through the rotor. Tell me what you think. Am I doing a good job or do I need to get demoted? About two, three miles away from Area 21 and just on the hillside, top of the hill here at the farm. And see some crane action going on. They got the second overhead bin up there. I figure well, I got a little bit of time here. To go out and see what the combine's doing, if it's throwing anything out the back. I don't think I am, because there's just a little bit of trash in the sample, which kind of tells me you're not blowing stuff out necessarily. It's like if your sample was like super clean, nothing but beans and no little bits of trash, that would be a sign that, hey, maybe I need to check to see what I'm throwing at the back. I move some trash out of the way, like here. Oh, I see few beans sitting on the ground. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, maybe that's more than I want. I don't know. This is kind of why you check. Look, I found some more. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that tells me I'm throwing a little bit more out the back tonight. It's not the worst thing ever, but I might need to open some stuff up to allow more stuff to fall through. It's always a challenge, that's for sure. You just kind of make little adjustments here and there, check it as you go. Sometimes you gotta realize it's not always gonna be perfect, but stay persistent and you'll get it figured out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's heavy, that's for sure. It's heavier than it looks. Ooh. Old starter's out. Oh, that's money, dude. We got battery power, that's good. Got that ground connected back. Uh-oh. Oh, come on. Joke me, right? Joke me, right? Grain car finally showed up. Got the one and only Elio, AKA Yo-Yo, in the grain cart. Doing a great job. Just caught Elio red-handed. Loading the truck tarp side. It's something we don't usually do because it's harder to see with the tarp. And it's just backwards from how we usually load. I'm calling him out. See if he sees us in a video. Well, that was extremely unfortunate. But, Bucky said it could be the relay. So he's going to bring a relay home. See if that fixes it. And if it does, then hey, at least we got a new starter on it at least, right? We're rolling down the gravel. With the good old row header back in action. We're heading to the next field. HB, what is going on? Cut beans, that's what's going on. It happened just like that, eh? Yep, didn't think we were gonna go till Friday and like, yeah, they're ready. Except for the little airport field, it wasn't ready. This is why you plant early beans, not only I mean, planting them early helps, but plant early two O's. Pulling the elevator, scale, right to the dump, right to the scale. I literally was keeping up with two combines. I mean, I was hustling, but I, I could keep up. Well, bean harvest is just scooting right along. Doesn't take much to just really get going. We got beaver in the grain cart. It'll be a new addition maybe on the YouTube here. Beaver and Badger. We 
got about 150 acres down. So, pretty good start. Hey! What's up? What's going on? You having fun this year yet? Huh? You having fun yet? Yeah, of course. Drop the heads, on to the next. Troops are rolling out. I got 50,000 on roughly. I'm gonna drive to the shop and load Badger there. And then I'll fuel up, cause she is thirsty. And we'll head to the field. It's a bird, it's a plane, no. It's the Badger. Fueling up. Oh, there's just a ghost over here. Notice it's the old guy doing the fueling. Hey, he showed up and he just started doing it. up for the night got another 40 acres basically knocked out before the night's over get everything dumped off and do it all again tomorrow if it doesn't rain there's about a 40 percent chance of rain tomorrow so uh we'll see what happens that is so cool 40 foot draper heat it up coming right at you Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at it, up, 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 up. Breaker 1-9, this is Double I, headed to Jewel, Iowa. Delivering some corn for a neighbor, and I'm actually going up to Fort Dodge to grab a load of fertilizer. So we'll show you a little bit what goes on there. Ah yes, Jewel. You guys have not seen Jewel yet, and the only thing I will say is Jewel is this close to being absolutely perfect. Things they have going for them that I really like. Number one, inbound and outbound scale. Super easy to get on, pull up to, no confusion. Number two, they use scan cards. So that is great, speeds up the process. Number three, the whole layout of the, of the plant is super easy for corn dumping. The pit is literally straight in front of the office where the scale is and then you just like do a loop and you come right back now the only gripe that i have about jewel is the pits are just a tad bit too small they're just not long enough you can, you can get your hopper both hoppers there but you can't open them all the way you go to lincoln way open them up go to iowa falls open them up cedar rapids open them up but here you kind of got to take it a little easy right after you pull off the probe and the scale it's all together there you literally pull straight ahead as you pull out of the dump you pull straight ahead hang a left go right back between there right to the right side of the scale house onto an outbound scale scan your card again Ticket prints out, and you're out. Just wish the pits were just a little bit bigger. They work, but a little bit bigger. But now I just sound like a complaining truck driver. I don't want to be one of those. Double lot, back at it again. Westbound on Highway 20. Headed to Fort Dodge to get some fertilizer. See you there. Here we are, Calcium Products in Fort Dodge, Iowa. Get some sulfur loaded on. Got the inside loadout, which is awesome. Tell them how much you want. They put it on. They got the conveyors that go up and do a drag conveyor in the center here between me and this other truck. And then what it basically does is it moves along a track and it just loads you. It's, it's really slick. My understanding, sulfur is, uh, according to Calcium Products, just looking on their website, it's used for chlorophyll formation which chlorophyll obviously is that green 
you know, pigment in the plant, you know, whatever, photosynthesis, you know, you know the gist, third grade science class. Chlorophyll formation and protein production, really essential for growth, especially in corn. And calcium products here considers it the fourth major nutrient for crop production just behind nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. There you go. Just got unloaded at the local ag supplier. We are headed back to Grand Central. As you can tell, it is pretty uh, wet out. So I don't think we are cutting beans. So we're gonna head back, see what's going on. Looks like badger and mustard are doing a little work to the 8420. The belt was kind of squealing last night, so I wonder if they're replacing the belt. We've got to change a couple tires. I think maybe just one tire on that trailer off the yellow semi. Look at that beautiful view. Two nice looking Peterbilts, area 20 in the back, all red and white. Man, that just looks so nice. Third time's a charm. Yeah, Maz. So they don't come off and hit that like Derek. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's no way really. Two new tires. Always make sure your valve stems are 180 degrees apart. Spicing it up a little bit. We're chopping corn silage. What? We don't have any cows. Well, we have a landlord that has a few cows, and this is his farm here, and he likes to chop a little silage for feed, and so we like to come out and help him. We got mustard in the 7800. I'm running an M6 141 Kubota. We'll say it's an it's all right tractor. It's all right. Uh. Yeah, it's, it's not John Deere, but you know, sometimes you just gotta smell the roses a little bit and try something new. We don't discriminate. He's got a harvest store, one of them big blue harvest stores that you see all over the countryside. So we're filling that up. Keep his cows fed, fat, and happy. They love corn silage. Honestly, I think I could, I could probably eat it. It, it looks that good. Just saying. Kind of out in no man's land. I don't really have a row to follow. Eating the corn. Look at that beast. Class Jaguar, man. Eating it up. We are loaded, ready to go dump into the harvest store. There's Andrew, landlord's son, 966. That's the same 966 that we put that new wedge in, so putting her to use today. I love it. Into the blue silo. What we're doing is just dumping it into a little blower system. See that auger? It shoots it in there, and then that blower comes around. It's ran by the tractor and the PTO shaft. The thing spins around and just shoots it straight up. That's like a 90 foot silo, I believe. Look at that! Get to the chopper! 
That corn looks real good in there. Nice green, big ears. The corn over on that strip did not have any nitrogen and the soil might not have been prepped as well as this side. So that's why this side is looking a lot better. Chopper rolling. Making that cow chow. is kind of weird, but also really fun to think about. I'm in a Kubota with a thousand and three hours, pretty new. Andrew, I'm loading, is running a 966 International, a tractor from the 60s and 70s, and Mustard is in a 7800, a mid 90s tractor with 5,500 hours. So we got a really complex, diverse lineup here. But at the end of the day, we're hauling these wagons to a silo to put silage on. And all three tractors are doing the exact same thing. So what am I getting at with this? No matter what color tractor you run, they all do the same thing. It all just comes down to personal preference. You can come on here and comment, oh, you guys are a John Deere Colt. Hey, John Deere's the way we've been raised. It's the way we grew up. It's what we know. Why would you change? like something why change it for everybody else they might like Kubota they might like Case IH they might like New Holland it is what it is but at the end of the day they're all doing the same thing we're all farming we're all just loving what we do and that's all that matters just a couple deer in their natural habitat look who got roped into going up top Asia mustard. Hey everybody, when you think you've seen it all, we're gonna cut beans at the baseball diamond today. And you say, what are you talking about, Willis? That's what I'm talking about. A little acre field, right by a little baseball diamond in town. This is fun stuff. Mindy, that's So you ask yourself, like the combine beans at the baseball diamond. It's a nice little square field. It's tight. You feel like uh, a grown up sitting in an elementary class. You feel out of place. People start watching. Yeah, yeah. People on the street on the golf cart you can't see. Yeah. The vision right there. Usually we plant sweet corn here, but we'd been on about a three-year rotation of that and we figured it was time to break it up. So next year this will go back to sweet corn and the whole small town here, about 500 people, can come and get sweet corn as they desire. And they just donate money to the local library for fundraising. Pretty good soil right here in baseball town.
Well, look at this young kid, all the way from Mississippi. He's gonna get his first combine ride. I don't even know his name. He just randomly walking through town, riding on a golf cart with his grandma. Look at that. This kid is gonna ride his first combine ride. Right here in the baseball diamond. Look at that, climbing right up there like he knows what he's doing. Wave. All right, good luck. Possibly the youngest combine operator yet this year. Six years old. Have a good trip home. Thank you. Best problem for a combine. It's beans. There's a few limas in there. And all the limas always float to the top. It's always better underneath, right? 8520 barking. Oh yeah, he's throttling up. He knows. He knows he's got an audience. Buggity, 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 boys! Let's go beaning! Unloading on the go up a hill. Yeah, that you know that that camera is actually really nice. It's better when you're loading a truck and you can be like, oh yeah, I need a little more in there if you're trying to blend stuff or whatever. Get a little gully. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. There we go. Oh, slow down just a hair. 85, 20. You can hear that girl bark from in the cab here. That's awesome. Later. I always love it when dad's running grain cars. You take a guy that usually runs combine, he knows where to be. He knows what spots to be in. He knows when to get out of the way. I remember learning from him. You guys remember that 8640 in the last video? That's what that's what me and the brothers kind of learned to run grain cart on. The 8640 and Kinsey 840 on duels. Man, those were some good times. That was probably the saddest thing to see that thing leave when you learn to, you know, kind of track you learn to do something kind of vital to the, you know, the farming operation. A lot of people give the grain cart guy crap, but hey, that's that's an important job. That is, aside from the combine, it's all important because you got you got to harvest it. You got to get the grain from the combine to the truck, and then you got to get the truck from the field to the elevator or to your your bin site. Everything's crucial. You got to have it all. A little wisdom from Bucky. Uh, there's not much there, but hey, it's, just, it's just just enough. Well, back just two miles up the road. Badger and Bucky getting her done. There she is, there she is, the most awesome 8520 on the YouTube. Oh, she's beautiful. Fifth to fourth, fifth to fourth. Hey, is there anybody that watches the channel that has an 8520 uh, ILS front suspension for sale? Let me know. Love to have another one of them. What's going on, big bad badger? Oh, time to put the horses in the barn. Sunday night, wives and girlfriend. Well, one girlfriend of them. Dinner at seven and six fifty-six. Supper, I should say. Look at that. Eighty-four hundred hours on the money. Oh my gosh, zero zero. How often does that happen? You let it idle for six minutes, man. It's gonna turn. Oh. You better be careful. It's not an 8400, but we do have an 8400. That's pretty cool. See y'all tomorrow. You're going to be in mustard's hands. Oh, boy. Oh, boy.